Hello everyone. As uh, I've been informed, my catchphrase is "How's it going?" Um, hey Michael. Hey Leonid. Leonid, is that how? Yes, Leonid. It looks a little unusual on the chat in the OBS window, but it looks uh, it looks perfectly good in the YouTube chat window. Um, yeah, so as you know, my name is Brian Locke. I uh, do a lot of work with ESPA 266s and I've been trying to stream every Monday at or this time, 9.30 GMT. Um, that's going to get a little bit more fun when it stops being 9.30 GMT in two weeks time and starts being 9.30 IST or whatever it's called. Um, but yeah, so... Um, I think I've been doing it for six or seven weeks now, which is a pretty big commitment for me. I normally get bored after that what that amount of time, but um, yeah, it's a nice uh, nice time for me in terms of my daughter's in bed. It's not too late for me, so uh, it's nice to get a, a video a week done, even though I don't need to edit anything. Hey, Stephen and Simon, no problem about the dipping in and dipping out. Um, yeah, okay, so let's jump into a recap of the project. And hey, Gary, actually, I should definitely say hi to you, seeing as you're a moderator, and you can just start banning everybody in the chat if you wanted to. Um, okay, so let's get this a small bit more focused. Can I just zoom in? Just probably trying to focus on the red wire, maybe. Um, yeah, so uh, this is the fort. Uh, live stream on the alarm project so the first couple we um, we built the alarm um, so it's built using an ESP8266 board this is a Wemos D1 mini and uh, this is a three dollar Arduino compatible board that um, has built-in Wi-Fi so um, yeah this is probably my favorite board um, so Highly recommend it. You do need to know how to solder with the ESP8266, or sorry, with the Wemos because it comes without the header pin soldered. But it's it's pretty straightforward soldering, so uh, I like it. Uh, it has a button so I can turn off the alarm. It has a buzzer so it can alarm, and it has a seven segment display. So this is just a really cheap seven segment display from AliExpress. Um, the ESP8266 is three dollars delivered you can buy a pack of 20 buttons for 40 cents or something the buzzer is probably about 60 cent and the display is about 70 cents so it's a uh, it's crazy how cheap you can get things um delivered from aliexpress so let's uh plug it in and show you what we have so far um So you can see there it's uh, displaying boot and startup and what it's going to do is it fetched the time from the internet there using an NTP server. I'll quickly go through the code of that now in a second. So now that's the correct time set and uh, let's show you how we can set an alarm. Um, so yeah, one of the things I hate about alarm clocks is kind of how awkward it is to set alarms so um yeah i wanted to do something a bit easier for uh, that so if i go to i think it's 37 yep so this is a web page that's actually hosted on the esp8266 so uh, that's the ip address that the esp8266 is connected to my wi-fi with so in here i can set an alarm so it's what 2134 so let's set it to 20 2135 and i'm sending the alarm so that's now saved the alarm on the esp8266 and when it changes to uh 35 it's gonna beep let me uh show you my desk there as well so i'm just going to cover the speaker a little bit so it's not as loud as it could be i'm hoping that the time does change now and it's not broken um it should be fine i've actually no oh, so there we go and uh yeah so the button just turns it off then so um yeah 
it's a pretty simple project so far is um yeah but uh what's nice is this is kind of a nice platform to do uh other cool things with it um so simon says he hates that his alarm clock wakes him up every day that's uh that's true um you could make an alarm clock that doesn't wake you up that would be really useful um yeah so like some of the things that you could do with it uh someone suggested on reddit today that instead of a buzzer you could have an mp3 so you could load in whatever files you wanted to uh, that's actually something i thought about before uh, i have an uh, an mp3 module um and so maybe we'll hook that up at some stage but um what i like is this is just a nice base that you could start doing kind of cool smart uh things with it um like so in the video description uh today i'm talking about adding google maps integration with it so what i'm going to do is well i'm not going to reveal where i work and where i live on the stream but we'll get um what we'll do is we'll fetch the live traffic uh, data on Google Maps uh, between two different places. We might pick somewhere that's um, busy at the moment, like maybe like the San Francisco Bridge or something might be busy um, because like anywhere in Ireland isn't going to have any traffic now, so uh, there's no point picking anywhere there. Um, and so you can tell, like Google will tell you the time it normally takes and it will tell you the time that it currently takes um w taking into account current traffic conditions so you can kind of figure out if the commute or the travel time is going to be faster or shorter than than uh, usual or whatever so what we were going to do is we're going to check the travel time between two different places and we're going to adjust the alarm based on that so if we pick somewhere that's quite um where traffic is quite bad at the moment like if we can get it to say like time with traffic is like 20 minutes slower than usual like if we could adjust the alarm to say okay i want you to go off 20 minutes earlier than usual <laughs> um so you know you don't get caught out if uh if there's an accident on the way to work or something, it, you know, it'll adjust the alarm to wake you up earlier. But more hopeful, if the traffic is really good, that uh, it'll give you an extra few minutes in bed. So, like, this obviously isn't f a feature for everyone, um, but uh, I just thought it would be something pretty cool. It should be pretty easy to do. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's jump into it. Uh, yes, uh, Simone um, is... Uh, is the lady with the robot uh, or builds shitty robots i guess is the best way to describe what she does uh that uh, alarm clock was the one that you know flicked her with a rubber glove over and over again and hey unexpected maker <laughs> i really want to say how's it going but i'm afraid i'm being judged uh how's it going um okay so let's show the code first um, so all the code for this is uh, up on GitHub as well. Um, yep, that's a Wemos D1 Mini. Um, Mar Martinus, is it? Martinus. Welcome to the stream. That's weird. On my on my dashboard um, on Twitch, I don't see your message, but I see the message on. Um, on the restream IO chat. That's funny. <laughs> it's going pretty good. See on it's going pretty good. Um if I pronounce that right. Uh okay, so yeah, it's a we most do one mini um and as I was mentioning earlier that's it's my favourite uh, board. I think they're just uh for the price they're crazy good. Um, okay, so uh, this, the code for this is all up on uh, GitHub as well. Um, it's pretty messy and kind of needs to be tidied up a bit, but I've been stopping myself from doing anything with this project not on a stream. So uh, yeah, when you're streaming live and you're trying to get stuff done as quick as possible, <laughs> sometimes being neat isn't the easiest thing. So I've kind of been doing the 
copying and pa uh, copy and paste uh, style of programming, so it's a it's a little bit messy, but uh, that's not too bad. Um, yeah, so we'll just go straight down into the setup. Um, yeah, so oh, that's another thing actually. It's uh, storing the um, alarm in um, in persistent memory, so it's it's twenty one forty one at the moment. Or 40 at the moment. So if I set this time to be 21:42, and send the alarm. So I need to put in some more kind of validations on the web page or whatever. Like it should come back and say alarm set successfully. So now I'm plugging out the device and I'm going to plug it back in again. So when you save, uh, when you save the alarm, it gets sent. Um, I can maybe zoom in on this. My scroll button or scroll wheel on my mouse is a bit broken um is i really think that should probably say save alarm but um <laughs> um yeah so uh when you send alarm there it um it saves the alarm to spiffs which is like an internal file system for the esp8266 and it's persistent across reset so it's like eprom and uh, so it's saved that the alarm's at 2142. So even though I restarted the board, like on startup, it loads out the alarm and uh, back into memory. And it's going to, uh, it's going to beep when it hits 2142. So um, it's kind of nice. Uh, Shine Vision, hello. How's it going? Um, make me... Uh, live stream reduces productivity by 90%. Yep, yeah, I'd probably agree with that wholeheartedly. Uh, and 98% could even be that too. Um, sometimes though, it um, sometimes people see things, uh, you know, catch mistakes or suggest a better way of doing things or, you know, um, <laughs> which is nice. <laughs> so if you feel like I'm doing something wrong, feel free to let me know. Um, there is a little bit of a delay, but I'll uh, try to keep a, as good of eye on the chat as possible. So yeah, that's what the spiffs is about. So it, it loads um, a config file on startup. All that is is uh, at the moment is the alarm. Um, then we're initializing the seven segment display. We have a pin for the alarm and we're just defaulting it to low. Um, then we have a pin for the button and we're using interrupts. Um, so interrupts are pretty important with the, when you're using it with the ESP8266 because your ESP could be busy doing some form of like network call. So like if you press the button uh, just while that network call is happening, um, it would uh, it would not pick anything up. So um, yeah, you want to, uh, use interrupts wherever possible. Let me see if I can tidy this up a small bit so we can have everything on at once. Um, yep. Uh, there is four megs, sort of, uh, in spiffs. Um, three megs, I guess. Uh, so there's four megs on the uh, Wemos, or on all those um, ESP 12 modules, um, but uh, yeah, so it depends on what you select here and your flash size. So I think it writes a small bit quicker if you use the four meg, one meg spiffs thing, but um, I think I always just leave it at three meg. So, you know, it's not a huge amount of storage, but like for config files or things like that, like it's perfect. There's no issues at all. I actually bought like a ton of SD card readers when I was first getting into Arduino because I was like, oh, this would be super useful, you know, to store configurations for stuff on and, and things like that. And then I found out about spiffs and I was like, oh, no, I don't need any of them. So if anybody needs a load of micro SD card or SD uh, card um, readers, let me know. I can hook you up. Um, yeah, so then it's just connecting to the Wi Fi. And then we're doing the handling the web server part of it here. So uh, handle root, I'll come back to that now in two seconds. Uh, we're also initializing uh, the time client. So this is what goes and gets the time from the internet. Um, so I'm not passing in anything here. 
Um, so it's defaulting to uh, GMT, which I happen to be in. So in a stream coming up pretty soon, we're going to have to handle daylight savings. Um, yep. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it from that. And then we're just starting the web server. So the web site, um, so handle file not found is this one that's just kind of comes with the default example of a web server handle root I'm using something called uh, string literals so uh, I'm reading in web page from alarmweb.h and uh, yeah so I'm serving that back up when somebody hits the root of the web server so if we look at alarmwebpage.h this is a string literal and um, so everything inside uh, between this and this is considered part of the string, so you don't need to escape anything. So it means you can kind of paste in exact HTML code into here, and um, you know, as I said, you don't need to escape, so it's pretty handy. And then um, spiffing, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and the other thing just to note about that is uh, you'll notice it has a .h um, ending. That's because you, <coughs> excuse me, you need to, um, it needs to be named something that the, um, that the C++ compiler will consider something it needs to do uh, something with. So um, you couldn't call it .html or it'd be ignored by the C++ compiler. So .h seems to work pretty good for me. Um, that's actually a pretty good idea, Shine Vision. Uh, he says he edits, well, you can see it on the screen, but I'm um, up there. Uh, he edits the SD, or he uses an SD to host his web um, web pages so he can just pop out the SD card and edit them. Yeah, that's a good idea. Another thing that some people do as well is they use the Spiff's uh, web server and they have a page to upload new um, web pages to it. Uh, which I think is okay. Um, for a more complicated website, I probably would do that. Um, for something small, I just like this because it's all part of the um, it's all part of the sketch. So if you download this and click the upload button, this goes in as part of it. So um, that's what I like about that. So th this is pretty simple HTML code as well. It's uh, yeah, it's just got an input field of type time that gives it you know that validation that it's the uh, an hour and a minute or whatever and then the button does save alarm and it just takes the value of time and makes uh, an ajax call which is a background request on a web page so you'll notice when i click the send button it didn't reload the page or anything it just made that request in the background and then if we go back to the arduino code i think it's up here somewhere no it's down here somewhere there is this handle set alarm so this is what gets called when that ajax request happens so it's just pulling out the uh it's pulling out the argument called alarm it's parsing the data so it's splitting up the time so it's splitting it into hours and minutes and uh then it um what does it do it yeah, it saves the config. These this alarm hour and alarm minute is um, alarm hour and alarm minute is a global variable, and uh, it saves the config. And the config just writes to a JSON file um, that's on the Spiff server, and that's the one that gets loaded at startup. And so that's the majority of it. And then just in the loop, it um, has this one second loop that. Uh, Every one second, it'll update the NTP client. That's probably too often, but who cares? Uh, it'll display the time, and uh, it you'll notice that the dots are um, yeah, seem to go very quickly there. But um, yeah, the dots kind of flicker. That's to show that it's still on. So it does this display time, and passes in this dots on, but changes what dots on is every time. And then it checks for the alarm. So how it does that is it just goes, is the current hour, is alarm active on, you know, so is the alarm active? I don't really have a user setting for that, but uh, somebody mentioned on the stream the last time that when there was no alarm at all set, it would just go off at midnight. 
and they were right. <laughs> um, it probably will go off at midnight anyways. And uh, yeah, so if hour is equal to alarm hour and minutes is equal to alarm minutes, uh, sound the alarm. And then the button, um, if the button is pressed, it uh, alarm handled is equal to true. And uh, that is it. So sound alarm, yeah. So yeah, when button button pressed is equal to uh, when button pressed is equal to true, alarm handled will be set as uh, true, and then uh, sound alarm won't get called anymore. So that's what stops the beeping happening. So yeah, it's uh, pretty easy. And then this uh, this code is just for um, displaying it. So if you're new to the stream, hopefully that helped. If you're old to the stream, I'm sorry that I've probably repeated that three times now. Um, but uh, here we are. Okay, so let's start with the Google Maps stuff. So um, I wrote a library for Google Maps integration um, a while ago now. I probably don't have it installed on this computer. And I don't, but that's fine. Um, we can get it from the library manager. So, um, yeah, I, let me get rid of the board. Um, yeah, I wrote it, um, I guess it would have been like last April or something around then, maybe, maybe May. Um, I built, uh, no, sorry, it was before that. Um, maybe March even. Um, yeah, so it was just a simple one that uh, went to the distance matrix API and um, yeah, see you later, Stephen. Um, so the Google Maps endpoint has a couple of uh, different endpoints and uh, the dist distance matrix was one of them. And uh, I did that and that would give you the travel time and would take into account traffic. But what it didn't let you do is um, specify like points on the route. So it was fine for like, hey, I want to see how long it takes me to get from Galway to Dublin. But if you wanted to say, hey, I want to go from Galway to Dublin via Cork, you couldn't do that. And it would take like the best way between two points at that given time. So like if you wanted to check your commute time to work on a specific route, you couldn't use the distance matrix API. So the original one was on the distance matrix API and that's still there if people want to use it. But then uh, later on then in April or May, I wrote around uh, the directions API and uh, that's probably the better one to use. Although the distance matrix API, the, the payload that comes back is a lot smaller, so it might be a little bit quicker, um, but uh, I don't think it would make a huge amount of difference. Um, okay, so let's go to Google Maps API. Hey, that's me. Uh, so we'll install it. Um, so if you're using the distance matrix API, you'll need to have the Arduino JSON library installed. And if you're using the directions API, you'll need to have the JSON stream, JSON parsing streamer library installed. Um, because like the directions API, when I was playing around with it, I was getting like a response back that was like 22,000 characters long. Okay, cool. So I never released the version that has the directions API. So time to get that off uh, GitHub, I guess. Um, let me better, uh, better do that. I might, um, I might actually do that tomorrow. Hey Dave, I really need a new uh, new thing to say other than how's it going. Uh, hey Dave, how are you? How about that? Um, uh, where are we? Google Maps. So um, tomorrow I actually have to travel uh, for work, so I'm staying away and uh, I might do a live stream if my internet's okay and I'm not too tired or anything but um what I was going to work on if I can do a live stream is just I have a lot of stuff I need to do with 
my libraries um, and uh, so hoping that that works out all right um, did it work for you Dave I'm hoping it did I was feeling a bit nervous about it <laughs> to be honest even though I tested it with my Mac I was still like oh I hope this works for him um, okay so I'm probably going to need to delete uh, delete the um, library I would say uh, Google Maps API yeah, I'll delete the library here so now I'll go back into Arduino uh, so I downloaded the zip from uh, github as you probably seen and now I'm going to add zip library so like some of the things I was talking about is like uh, a lot of my libraries don't support ESP32 and I'm only missing like one line that would fix it for me so uh, I should probably just add that line you know in the different libraries and just add an example or whatever Um so yeah where am I looking for Arduino Google Maps API and even like I should update this now as well like I have you know I have a whole other functionality that's not in uh, the released library, so I need to do that. But also, like, there's no reason that this shouldn't work on an ESP32, but it's missing that uh, close connection. Um, yeah. Uh, one thing actually with the Mac, uh, Dave, with the the camera is I needed to set like a custom um, custom uh, resolution for some reason like the default resolution only showed up 720 but like it definitely supports 1080 like this is that is a 1080p uh, image and uh, it's just coming from my webcam so um, yeah I don't know um, okay so if I might need to restart to get the examples in yes I do so oh no it's done Yes, um, so directions, let's bring this up. So I need to get an API key and I need to not show it to you. Um, I don't know, should, I should do lots of things. Um, yeah, so, but then all you need to do is, uh, there's a few different input options you can use, like if you want to avoid furries or tolls or stuff. There's a load of different um, options you can pass into it and you can find more details on the Google Maps API page or whatever. Um, so uh, yeah, and you can specify your units or metric, your traffic model is best guess, and departure time. So like you could set the departure time to be, um, like say say your alarm is at seven, you could make the departure time be like at eight or whatever you want. Um, you know, like you probably aren't getting into the car the minute your alarm goes off. Um, yeah, but uh, if you don't set up face cam, how are we gonna see Hack Giver or whatever you call them? I thought that was a pretty funny video that you posted on Twitter. Hack Giver, Heck Giver. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> um, yeah, let's talk on Twitter. So then all you do is you pass in like a destination and an origin. So an origin is obviously where you're starting, destination is where you're going, and then waypoints you can uh, you can pass in. Um, so that's what I mentioned earlier about the um, about the via. Um, Cork so that's like saying I want to start in Galway and get the travel time to Dublin but I also want to stop through Cork which is like a stupid thing to do um, but it was just a uh, it's just uh, an example so like you know if if you wanted to say like there was a I don't know a set of traffic lights and you could go left or right to get to work you know you could say hey show me the travel time if I set a waypoint over on the left turn and show me a travel time if I set a waypoint over on the right turn and then you can compare the two of them um, yeah so okay uh, so I need to get my API key and I need to show you 
not show you my API key. So how I'm going to do that is uh, I'm going to create a new file here. Um, and I'm going to, you can't see because I'm in the way. Um, I'm going to call it uh, secret.h. And I'm going to put in hash define maps API oops, uh, key and then it's going to be blah 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 maybe not that blah 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 uh, so I'm going to save that and uh, now while I remember I'm going to uh, commit that to source control hey crocoduck good evening well actually I'm not sure where you are from so uh, it could be good evening or it could be good morning um, and L Leonid was saying you can probably set the arrival time too that's true actually um, that might be something worth checking out so this is um, uh, what is this called? This is called Source Tree. Um, so it's a tool made by uh, Bitbucket, but I just use it with GitHub, anyways. Um, so it's just a way of managing my um, my repos. Um, if I was on a Mac, um, I would just use the command line one. I can bring myself back in. Um, but yeah, the Windows one, I just like this. It's fine. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add. Uh, secret.h um, so I'm staging it and I'm going to push it up to master uh, you are in Italy cool um, yeah I have a I have a group a telegram group for um, for like the telegram library that I have and um, there's actually a lot of people in it. It's like 200 and something people. Um, I think most of them aren't there for the library and they're there just because it was a Telegram group with Arduino in the name. But um, there's a huge amount of people from Italy in it. It's like, I, I think they might be the predominant uh, nationality. Um, it is, uh, Arduino is uh, Italian born. So maybe, no, Why am I missing a window? I want to see something. Yeah, branches will probably do. So what I'm going to do here now is well, working copy. I feel like I'm missing a window. I should be able to see the different files here doesn't matter what I'll do is I'm going to make a change to uh, secret.h and save it and now what I'm going to do is so I've already committed this and pushed it up uh, so it's now on the repo if you go look at it but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it to um, I'm going to add it to ignore why can't I add it to ignore maybe I need to stage it first no why can't I add it to ignore? Well, maybe I don't have an ignore file. That would probably... Surely it'd be smart enough to create it. Um, okay, I'm gonna have to do this manually because it doesn't... Uh, it's not letting me add it at the ignore file for some reason. Um, okay, so if I go to documents... What? is this one called this is called arduino alarm clock i'm gonna make a dot git ignore the txt part oh, you're killing me <laughs> thanks windows i okay so I, I can create this from the command line i think this is so stupid I can show you what I'm doing. Uh, what is
Uh, okay, so to create an empty file, I can do this. Um, YouTube is complaining that the quality has dropped. I don't see it being bad on um, OBS, so let me know if uh, if there's any issues. It seems fine on Twitch too, but YouTube is complaining about something. Uh, copy null, and then I want to do git ignore. Cool. So there is my git ignore file. It doesn't know what to open it with. Let's open it with Adam. Status view, log view, search view. Oh, no. I don't know. Uh, not search view, find status view. Like, I would like to be able to see the commits. Maybe that's log view. Yeah. Um, Okay, doesn't matter. Anyways, so here's my uh, git ignore. Cool, thank you, unexpected maker. So I think I can just add. Um, what's that file called again? Secret.h. That should be it. So now, when I have that staged, if I make a change to uh, secret.h, it shouldn't get picked up anymore. And it did, perfect. I'm obviously doing something wrong, but I'm not fully sure what I am doing wrong. Um, uh, I won't worry about that now. I'll fix that up afterwards. I just won't commit uh, the code at the moment. Um, okay. Cool. I need to get my API key. So let's do a bit of that together and the rest of it not together. Um, okay. So we scroll down here. So we're using the distance matrix API. So they've two different keys. So um, I'm gonna click on this page off screen because I don't know if it'll reveal anything when I click on it. Uh, I forget. Uh, it doesn't, but it brought me to distance matrix. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's uh, directions API that I'm using. So yeah, you can scroll down here and there's get a key option. Um, so let me go get that. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm on a screen here and it's asking me to create a new project. So I'm gonna create a project called uh, stream. No, I'll call it, call it alarm clock. I know uh, this is super exciting seeing me talk about what I see on a screen, but uh, I don't want to show you my key. Uh, it's doing something very slowly. It's just got a spinner at the moment. I'm not going to scroll over to uh, or bring it over to you in case it uh, just pops up as soon as I do. Yeah, it popped up there. Um, okay, so I have that copied to my clipboard in the alarm clock, bring over that, paste in the key, and save it, no, 
let's try remember to uh, not click on secret.h. I'll just uh, I'll just blow away the key if it uh, if I do do it. But uh, you probably can't do a huge amount with it anyways. But uh, it's probably just best to not do it. So now uh, I include secret.h. So now I should have access to the name of that file or that thing that I forget, which is. Uh, API key. So um, I might just put it up here with a comment or something. Um, here it'll do. So now that should be my API key. So let's take a look at. Um, let's take a look at pulling in what we need from it. So. Normally, I would just use the. Um, I would just test out an example, but I'd have the same problem. <laughs> well, I guess I could just pull the secret.h off screen, um, but I, I'm I'm just gonna drag it across into. Uh, I'm gonna drag it across into the other um, code. Get rid of the screen. Uh, yes, command line all the way. It's so stupid though that they don't let you uh, create uh, a file like that because there's a ton of files that are like that, um, you know, dot mp m or c or whatever and dot mavens and stuff. I don't know, but whatever. Uh, thanks, Windows. Um, okay, so let's get this down to be a bit smaller so I can have them kind of split screened. Um, all right, so I need to bring in the directions API, which is obvious. Um, I need to bring in, I already have Wi-Fi, but I need to bring in client secure, Wi-Fi client secure. So this is a HTTPS call that we are gonna need to make. Um, we don't wanna check Google Maps a huge amount because it takes a, a while so um, and you're only allowed to do it uh, a certain amount of time so 2,500 elements a day um, PsyQ I'm mad for going live um, yeah I uh, no Mondays are a staple unless unless there's a reason I can't do it Mondays I'm gonna try to do it Mondays uh, the other ones are just if uh, if it works out um, but welcome, good evening, guten Abend, well it's knocked in, no, knocked, guten Nacht, I can't remember, I, I did German for um, like five or six years in school, and I can't speak a word of it, um, and that's a really typical story for um, people, Irish people, like they do a foreign language for, uh, they do a foreign language for um, years and they can't speak it at all. I've done Irish for even longer, and I'd probably be better at Irish than German, but I'm terrible at it. Like, there is, if you did anything for as long as I've done Irish, and it's the same with everybody, you should be able to speak it fluently, but, yeah. I blame, I blame the teachers. Uh, okay, we'll, uh, we'll just use this exact waypoint for the moment. We might change it to something uh, busier in, uh, in a second. We don't need the waypoint either, but I guess it's nice. Uh, we only said good night when we're going to bed. Okay. Um, guten Abend is right. Okay, I did. I did good. I remembered something, but then <laughs> immediately forgot it again. Uh, okay, we'll put in this um, direction input options. I don't know if we'll need to set that, but we'll uh, we'll bring it around with us anyways. Uh, we'll set them in the setup, although I don't really want to avoid anything. But I'll make sure to make the units metric so uh, Americans don't know what we're talking about. Um, it's actually kind of funny, not <laughs> how is it going. Um, e pretty much, yeah. Yeah, English is our main language. Um, so technically we're a dual uh, language country, but we're not, like, not at all. Um, 
I wouldn't know the exact percentage, but it definitely wouldn't be higher than 10 would have fluent Irish. Um, so, yeah, which is kind of weird, but uh, that is the case. Um, yeah, like technically you should be able to do like your taxes in Irish and everything like that. And my driver's license has both English and Irish on it, but it's it's predominantly English for sure. Um, uh, for, so in the sketch, there would probably, you'd probably just have a separate sketch for the ESP8266 and the ESP32, but for the library, it supports both, um, or sorry, it will support both by the time I'm finished, <laughs> but, um, so the, um, I did a stream there a while ago working on the Octoprint library. I don't know why I said that with a German accent. Um, but um, when we're initializing the Google Maps API here, you can see I'm passing in a client right from the, from the sketch. So this, what the library expects is a, a, a what is it? it it expects an implementation of the client interface, which um, like ESP8266 has, ESP32 has, uh, MKR1000 has. So, and they all conform to the same thing um, that the that the client interface is using. So this library actually supports whatever implements that. Um, so that's why I pass it in, if you're ever curious to why it's passed in. It makes it super flexible. It means that you don't have code like, if I'm an ESP32, I want you to initialize this. And if I'm a whatever, I want you to initialize that. So like even it's happened before with like the Telegram library and stuff that someone was saying like, oh, I want to try out using it with this uh, sim 800 module and I was like oh I came across this tiny GSM library that wraps that sim 800 module into a client interface and sure enough like I had literally never used it before you know I'd never tested it or anything and uh, the guy um, tried it out and passed it in like like this and it worked and I was like cool so that's why I do uh, I pass in the client from here um, Yep, so we've already done that. We need to get our maps API key. Have I done that or have I been copying and pasting somewhere weird? No, I haven't gotten down that far yet. Okay, that's fine. Um, I also need to comment out the begin line, although I could move my uh, I could move my uh, Wi-Fi details into secret.h now, but I, I'm not gonna bother. Um, what else do we need? So we. Did I definitely not bring them? Yeah, okay. This is so messy. Okay, cool. Let's bring in this stuff. Uh, it's not API key, it's maps API key. Uh, we brought in these input options. Um, what's that? <laughs> uh, Sorry, I didn't read your line. Eighth class or so, we were better at English than the exchange student in Southampton. Hedge end. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've never been to Southampton or anywhere even close to it. I've been to Brighton. I think that's about as close as uh, close as I've been to it. Um, but yeah, I always find this hilarious anytime I'm in Germany and you go up to somebody and like, oh, sorry, do you speak English? And they're like, I'm sorry, I only speak a little bit of English. And it's like, if you could only speak a little bit of English, you wouldn't have been able to say that sentence perfectly. And they always have like amazing English. And it makes, uh, it makes us uh, super lazy because we don't need to know German because you all know English. So, uh, yeah, and you probably have a much better grasp of the rules of it and stuff. So, yeah, interesting. Although Dave didn't believe me with uh, pronunciation uh, there on his stream. I think, I can't remember how you were pronouncing it, but to, like, using a tread needle. I think you were calling it uh, suing, 
or something, but it, it's sewing, and then he didn't believe me that that's how it was pronounced, and he was like, oh, maybe in Ireland, and I was like, no, <laughs> just, that's how it's pronounced. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's bring in all of this stuff. Um, down in the loop. So the Google Maps stuff uh, is going to be separate from the um, separate from the other loop because we only want it to happen like very rarely. Um, yeah, I don't know why I do that. Am I changing waypoints or something? Oh yeah, I'm blanking out waypoints for some reason. I don't need to do that. Oh yeah, sure, it's the, just a demo. Um, and I guess we'll add all this check Google Maps stuff in as well. Okay, sawing. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know the German word for it or how to pronounce it, so uh, you're way better than me. Um, okay, this is probably not going to compile, but uh, let's see how it goes. Um, yes. Go away, Java er. Um, hey, A L S W. Welcome. We're currently talking about how bad I am at languages. Um, let me take a quick look around. And hello to whoever else is watching on Twitch. I think I'm counted as the first person. And there is 26 people watching on YouTube. Cool. Um, oh, you jerk. Hmm. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, time to go delete that key. If one of you is super fast, uh, you can probably uh, paste that in and use it somewhere. Um, Mr. Geek Gamer, I'll uh, get back to your um, question in a second now. Uh, okay, cool. I got a new key. But let's <laughs> let's reuse this one to figure out what happened. I guess I need to put quotes around it, right? So the, I don't know. They say that the new one will be available immediately, but the old one won't be disabled for a while. So I don't know. Have at it, boys. Ugh. I can restrict it to different things. I, like so, I've done it before where I've revealed a key on a stream, uh, <laughs> but I I clicked the secret that age myself. I've never had the Arduino ID reveal it for me. So, um, Michael actually had the suggestion on Twitter, and it sh it is something that I should do uh, pretty soon. Is um, I should add Wi-Fi Manager to this, and uh, the key should be an input to Wi-Fi Manager. Um, yeah. So, Mr. Geek Gamer, I've uh, built uh, an alarm clock um, using an. E oh, let me show you the alarm clock. I suppose makes sense. Uh, using an ESP8266 and a simple seven-segment display, and. Uh, so what we're doing with the Google Maps API um, is we're going to check the travel time between two places, and we're going to adjust the uh, we're going to adjust the um, alarm based on the response from that. Uh... <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I actually missed that live stream uh, of yours. I, so I caught the one that you ended up 
using the whole way through and I caught that right from the start but yeah so I just heard the aftermath of that could be worse <laughs> I guess yeah I don't know what people can do with the like the worst you could do is you know overuse my account I guess and get me blocked don't do that <laughs> um but yeah it's it's no no harm done really um Taka Nying, I can of course um you want to join in on the YouTube fun um that, it's really weird I don't see the chat coming in on uh Twitch I, I see them coming in on that thing but not on my actual Twitch dashboard so that's the that's the um that's the link to the current live stream uh that's the link to the current live stream, uh, Taka. Um, if you're asking just for the channel link or whatever, you can uh, grab it from there. Um, I have tons of fun over here on YouTube. Um, yeah, so thanks for joining, Mr. Geek Gamer and Taka9. Um, Taka9, I'm pretty sure you, you were on some of the older Twitch. Uh, Twitch streams. I've definitely come across you before. Uh, you were an OG Brian Locke live streamer uh, viewer. Back when I had like four or five people watching. <laughs> four or five on a good day. Um, okay, so that uploaded, but uh, I guess it's not going to work because my key... I don't know if my key is active or not. Uh, yeah, so this... Uh, it is at least somewhat active so it's saying like the traffic from Galway Ireland to Dublin Ireland is this uh, yeah um, so it's doing uh, duration and traffic is 5 hours and 18 minutes and that in minutes is that and then duration uh, oh, thank you for auto scrolling I don't know, it seems to be failing half the time. That's good to know. Um, or maybe I'm... I th actually, I think I'm just printing it out twice or something stupid. We'll, uh, we'll take a look at that in a minute. But um, yeah, so it's traffic time in minutes is uh, 1907. And normal duration is 19885. Uh, so that's something kind of uh, interesting um, that... When I was originally doing this, I didn't think this would be possible. That duration and traffic is less than normal duration. Um, so I guess it's... Um, I guess the normal duration is something like an average or whatever. Um, while the duration and traffic, like, it, it's 10.30 in Ireland now in the evening. And, uh, like, it just... Um, like there is no traffic that that is highway or motorway or whatever you want to call it the entire way from Galway to Dublin there is no traffic whatsoever um yeah well SW thank you um yeah that's kind of uh, a lot of what I was doing when I first got into ESP 8266s was uh writing libraries around public API is kind of similar to the Google Maps one. Uh, you are absolutely welcome to do a video in Spanish about it. You're welcome to do a video in English about it if you want to. Um, like I, I'm i only delighted to see people uh, use them in projects or do videos about them. Like that, uh, that actually means a lot to me. So uh, please feel free. Um, yeah, so, okay, we're getting the time back, so we could, like, I could even base it on this here and adjust the time, so, like, we see that it's going to be uh, a little bit faster. Um, uh, one thing that I'm noticing, that, is that right? So the text here is 5 hours and 17 minutes. But then they're saying that the duration in minutes is 19885. I'm not great at maths, but 100, 885 
minus 45 is definitely a bigger difference than uh oh no sorry it's the other way around but it's still it's still wrong right so yeah what happened here maybe that's seconds or something uh would that make more sense i thought it was minutes uh like okay. oh sorry my uh the display is in the way um so let me show you what i'm talking about um yeah so it's saying like it's five hours and 17 minutes that's the text that came back and then this is the number that came back 19045 and then this is the number that came back for traffic or whatever yeah, sorry about that, Sean. I caught it there <laughs> afterwards, and there's a bit of a delay, so um, he sees, don't see nothing. It's hard to say. Um, apologies. Um, yeah, so like that's that's a difference of what 14 minutes, and that's a difference of close to like 850 something. So uh, maybe it's seconds. Uh, so what is it? Nine one nine eight five uh, divided by sixty. Still, yeah. So it's it's coming back in seconds, not minutes. So oopsies. Um, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> let's fix that, anyways. Um, where is it? Duration values, so this should be seconds. Now, why is it failing every second time? Don't know. Need to look into that, but uh, no harm anyways. So what I'm going to do is, so now we have a travel time back and what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the alarm. No, we'll, we'll get somewhere that has bad traffic. Uh, right, so let's, uh, let's open an incognito window because uh, Google has ratted me out enough today. Um, because if I go to Google Maps on a normal window, it's going to show you where exactly where I live. So uh, let's hope that uh, the incognito window doesn't do that. Maybe I'll just do it off screen for a minute. Uh, yes. Yeah, it doesn't. I don't know. It's not where I live, anyways. Um, so let's look at uh, Brooklyn Bridge. Let's see what the traffic is like on the Brooklyn Bridge. Oh, yes, my scroll wheel being a bit broken is uh, <laughs> it's causing me a problem. I can't scroll out. Um, I can just use this. Show me traffic. Where's traffic? Wow, I did a real bad job spelling that. Um, let's go to San Francisco. I've been reliably informed that this is always busy. Um, yes, okay. Uh, remind me later, please. Is it this? No. Menu? Yes, show me traffic. Ah, come on. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. Let's go, let's go back to Brooklyn. Brooklyn. <laughs> no, Crocoduck. You can't. Can't see where I live. Um. Okay, let's pretend that we live here and we work over, what is it doing? 
Oh, it's, uh, let me get rid of Brooklyn, New York. Okay, that looks fine. 36 minutes or 30 minutes. Okay, cool. Um, so we can actually just paste these. Uh, uh, what can we do? Oh, it's these two here. So these are the... Um, Does psych you? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, you can't see where I live. <laughs> uh, well, you can do your black magic. I'll build onwards on my elite dangerous control monster. Cool. Um, yeah, well, it's just there's no traffic in Ireland at the moment, so uh, we might as well uh, pick somewhere. Um, yeah, so I'm taking, uh, this is the um, coordinates for the first point, the origin, so I'm just copying that from the URL. Um, I go into a lot of detail on uh, an Instructables post um, about this, so if you're looking for details on how to do that, um, or how to use this, that Instructables post is the one to use, it's uh, Arduino Commute Checker. Uh, the fact I live in Ireland is not at all uh, um, a secret, and even, like, my Twitter even says the town I live in, I probably should not have that, <laughs> um, yeah, I would prefer not to have this star show up of exactly where I live, that would be, uh, that would be ideal. Um, yeah, so I, I don't really need this waypoint, so I'll just blank that out. Um, so am I, I think I'm pulling back, uh, response start address. Okay, cool. Um, so let's upload that and see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, uh, uh, I'm from New York, New York. Uh, Oh, that's terrible. Um, yeah, I actually lived in New York for uh, a few months. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm Australian. Um, I'm not going to just start doing accents because I'm terrible at them. But, um, and it's been recorded, so people would have proof of how terrible I am at them. But, uh, yeah, I've never been to Australia. I want to go at some stage, but it's uh, so far away. Um, yeah. don't know if I'm going anywhere this year. Mm. Has anybody been working on any cool projects while this is uploading? Um, I never... I, uh, <laughs> Andrew Kier, Kier, Kieran? Or is it Kiernan? That sounds like a pretty Irish name. Uh, Kieran. Uh, yeah, <laughs> my accent reveals a lot, and as I was saying in the live stream at the weekend, uh, how I pronounce uh, tree also uh, reveals a lot about uh, how Irish I am. That's like my passport. <laughs> We're not all ginger. <laughs> um, yeah, I just need uh, I just need somebody else to pay for it, uh, Unexpected Maker, and I'll be right over. Um, I know it'd be more than that at this stage too. Uh, this was. Uh, I'm not bringing an 18 month old on a plane for 24 hours. Uh, PsyQ, go for it. I'm not an expert on rotary encoders, but I've used them in a project and I like them. So, go for it. Okay, cool. So yeah, normal duration is 15 minutes, but now it's 29 minutes. So uh, yeah, let's use that and uh, let's use that. So yeah, every second one is coming back as zero. So that's interesting. Yeah, I think you do need the resistors, all right. I'm not fully sure. I have, I have like bare ones myself. You know, the, the actual just the rotary encoder and not the module. But I haven't tried to hook them up yet. Um, 
electronics workshop i actually have an instructable on doing exactly that uh, i've made it wi-fi controlled um if that would be any help to you um yeah it's it's actually a really straightforward project um yeah uh started to monitor the outdoor temperature uh oh that's cool actually yeah that's something i'd like to do too um yeah <laughs> the one i saw was uh it was years ago actually it was um by an australian they have an unfair advantage on uh on the amount of sun they get i think um but i think they do need um i think they need uh i think they need to be slept and i think they need a battery as well um yeah for something like man monitoring the outdoor temperature of your garden like uh if you could like post it to um as a tink speak or somewhere like that and uh like sleep in between because you don't need to know hey what temperature is it right now like is in every five minutes or whatever would be loads i would say um and then you'd have a nice like map over time um if you can't find that link electronics workshop i can uh i can paste it to you in um in make me's uh uh discord afterwards but um if you just search for um me on uh, instructables it's one of my more recent ones um yeah it's it's a fun project actually and it uh it leaves you with um a pretty uh a pretty um versatile thing afterwards because what i ended up doing was making a web page controlled um but like it had endpoints to say, hey, I want you to drive. Hey, I want you to stop. I want you to turn. I want you to turn left. Uh, so like you could write uh, an application or uh, anything. Um, like uh, I don't know if if any follow me on Twitter. I um, if any follow me on Twitter, I uh, posted I got a connect <laughs> yesterday, and um, like what I was thinking is you could have like. Uh, an app on your computer that's looking at the inputs from the connect so maybe if you put up your hand uh, like it sends a command to the car to say drive and then when you drop your hand it'll say like go um <laughs> oh that's interesting uh you hope you survived the worst of it i wasn't too bad down here we we had stocked up and uh but I didn't leave the house like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, <laughs> Saturday, so um yeah. Okay. So let's get to this. So what I want to do now is uh, that fact that it's coming back as zeros sometimes is a bit of a pain, but uh we'll get around that. So what we're gonna do is it could be because my key is old. Let me fix up my key. I was worried it was after showing you my key again. Um, now, Arduino, don't show them this key. Please. Um, yeah, so what I can do to just check that I'm, I'm after getting a good response is if like all, all these things are coming back as zeros so if i uh do if is equal to zero uh just do this again and look hopefully it works that time um hey sil how's it going how's it going damn i do say it all the time uh can you post the link? I've uploaded how I connected the rotaries and they work directly connected that one. Um, is that to me, PsyQ? Um, I'm not sure what link I need to repost. Um, link got censored. Ah, uh, yes. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. There must be a way of permitting you to... Uh, 
send links. I don't know how to do it. I saw some people in another one type like uh, exclamation mark permit, but I didn't see any documentation to back up that that works. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure. Um, no worries, Sean. Uh, thanks for joining. Um, yeah, the IR Blaster was like one of my first projects to do. Um, that's nice. I should revisit it at some stage. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is up with these alarm global variables. I'm going to uh, create a new one, uh, which is uh, traffic offset or something. Traffic off set and we'll let that equal to zero and then what we're going to do down here is we will take a duration in traffic so we'll take normal duration so response uh, let's do this traffic offset is response duration value so this is the one in seconds minus the duration and traffic value well, it probably should be the other way around oh it does work does it um cool so yeah um i don't know if you saw andres speece speece <laughs> andres speece so many different things going through my head now. <laughs> um, Andreas Pieces video. He he did one recently uh, where he integrated with um, with Google Calendar. But uh, that'd actually be a pretty nice feature for the alarm clock as well. Um, that if you could set the alarm from Google Calendar or whatever. So um, yeah, it's uh, something on my to do list. Um, so this is gonna be wrong. Um, I don't know if I trust you. Dave Darko. Okay, let's try it. Permit. Do I need to do at Dave Darko? Okay, let's try it. Okay, go for it, Dave. Don't make me regret this. Um maybe without the at. Um yeah, I actually, so I didn't have the idea for, um, cool, so I Q, I'll, uh, I'll take a look at that, uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> like I saw it happen in, in Unexpected Maker's stream, and, uh, like, I couldn't find any documentation for it, so, uh, he was just making everybody, uh, ad admins or whatever. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but then he made someone an admin that I don't think uh, Dave Watts was uh, was uh, um, yeah too impressed with because he was acting up on his uh, channel. Uh, yeah, I should put a delay here if it doesn't work. Actually, delay one hundred. That's a good suggestion, Reb. Um, the refresh rate's pretty slow at the moment. It's like every sec or every sixty seconds um, is what it should be. Anyways, if we take a look at the loop again, API two flip. Yeah, that's sixty seconds. So it's every sixty seconds. It's doing this check Google Maps. Um, so it should be okay. Uh, yeah, so this is the duration uh, traffic value minus the regular duration, and then we'll uh, divide it by 60. Um, hey, tribute. Uh, yep, that's exactly what we're doing. Um, I'll show you my lovely alarm clock here. Um, so it's uh, using an NTP server uh, to set the time, and we're now making it... Um, making it take into consideration uh, Google Maps traffic time <laughs> yeah. uh, 
I think uh, David Watts was definitely like, do not do that, unexpected maker. I feel like he's been burnt in the past <laughs> by modding everybody. Um, so what are we doing here? This is a uh, system print, so traffic offset. And we'll do a colon and a space. And now we'll do a zero print line. I should have just wrote that out, but I'm terrible at typing. Traffic offset. Uh, is that a Twitch Plays Pokemon reference, Aiden? <laughs> I uh, I never actually watched the stream, but I absolutely used to love checking in on, uh, like, I don't know, recaps of it and stuff. Um, and if you have no idea what I'm talking about, Sorry, <laughs> but they had a they had a anarchy and democratic vote or something uh, to help navigate through hard parts or uh, something. Okay, so we have a uh, traffic offset now. So what we'll do in here is uh, in the check for alarm, we'll do if um, if traffic offset is greater than zero. Uh, no, if traffic f offset is not equal to zero, um, yeah, so let's do this, int, uh, what do I want to call this, uh, not real, um, effective alarm minute. Uh, is equal to alarm minute and int effective alarm hour equals alarm hour. Um, yeah, so I might do. Um, <laughs> Um, I might do, I might limit it so that it's less than 15 minutes, or sorry, that it, the max it can be is 15 minutes because, I don't know, you probably don't want to be in a scenario where it's like, hey, you know, traffic was amazing here, let's change the time by like an hour or whatever. Uh, no, I'll, I'll leave that for another stream. Uh, get to do some fun maths. So if traffic offset, so if it's a big number, it means that traffic is bad and we need to minus the, so we need to minus traffic offset from, uh, we need to minus traffic offset from stuff. Um, so uh, let's do effective alarm minute is equal to effective alarm minute minus traffic offset, right, which is in minutes. So now we need to check is effective alarm minute less than zero. If effective alarm minute is less than zero, we need to do something about that. Um, what do we need to do? We need to just add 60 on and try again, I guess. Oh, so it'll be while effective alarm minute is less than zero. We'll just... Uh, so if it's less than zero, we want to... So we're taking it away. So we need to reduce... Effective alarm minute is equal to effective alarm. Oops equals effective alarm plus 60 but then we need to reduce the effective alarm hour minus one um, that, that could happen and if I need to get up a tree I need to get up a tree uh, if traffic offset is really zero then your effective alarm will be the alarm that was set um, by default, so it just won't impact at all. Um, so tra traffic offset should of zero should work the same as if 
we weren't checking the traffic at all. Um, I never actually saw the Twitch does uh, install Linux stuff. <laughs> That's great. Um, uh, do you have any ESP projects that I use daily? Uh, the, the alarm clock I've been using for the last week or so. Other than that, not really. I had um, I had one that controlled my immersion for like maybe four or five months, and that worked great. Um, yeah. What network are you using for the ESP? Is that is that me? I'm just using my own like Wi-Fi network. Um, yeah. So. So while effective alarm is um, that we, <laughs> it's super smart Aiden, it's always smart. If I, if I did it, it's smart. Okay, that that will fix up that. And uh, right, now we need another while loop. Effective alarm minute is uh, greater than 59. Um, so this is going to work the opposite of this, so we need to take 60 away from it. Yeah, because if it was 60 I'd want it to be 0, and we're going to add an hour on to effective alarm. Um, so that solves that problem, but now we also need to solve the midnight problem. <laughs> so, um, I guess we just need to do the same thing with the hour. Um, yeah. Okay, so while effective alarm hour is greater than Twenty-three. Hmm. What do I want to do here? Uh, I guess if I if it uh, what do I want to do? I can do this smarter. So if I added time on and I was on hour twenty-five, I would want that to be one o'clock in the morning so I could if it's greater than 23 I should just take 24 away from it and that would make that right okay effective alarm hour is minus 24 and yeah that should work um Yeah, I'm not. I'm not 100 sure. I'll use this. This is more of a proof of concept. Just do a percentage 24 at the end. Will that that will work. Will give me zero 23. Yep. 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 Um. I guess I can, I can probably just do that once, regardless, right? Like it doesn't it doesn't matter if it is greater than twenty. I still have to fix the minus one part. Uh, that's correct. That will yeah. Let's do that if if yeah. Okay, that solves the if it went over. So now if it was minus. So if I wanted it to be minus one. I would want that. Sorry, if it ended up being minus one, I'd want that to be twenty three. So I guess I can just take the minus number away from 24. <laughs> like the traffic is never going to be over 24 hours long. Yeah, sure. If it's minus, let's, let's fix that. Hmm. I don't know. This just looks weird to me. But anyways. Um, If is less than zero, so zero is fine, but then if it's less than zero, I want effective alarm hour to be effective 24 minus. Hmm. 
24 percentage 24 would give you zero uh, which is what you'd want for midnight calculate all based on minutes after midnight hmm it's not a bad idea um i think we're pretty close with this anyways so if it's minus like so yeah let's let's give an example where we ended up with a minus three so minus three would be so starting from 12 you'd want to go back an hour or three hours so that's 11 10 9 so you'd want minus 3 to be uh, 2100 so yeah I think 24 I think 24 works out fine yeah that's true I uh, yeah let's not worry about edge cases if it's less than zero effective alarm is equal to 24 uh, 24 plus effective alarm right because it's going to uh, it's going to be a minus number um, hours plus 24 percentage 24 does that work so yeah, if it was minus three, that would give you, yeah, cool. See, this is the, this is the beauty of live streaming. Hey, Cosper, <laughs> I really want to say, how is it going? Uh, how is it going? That can be my new thing. Uh, Andres Spies says, he's the guy with the Swiss accent, and uh, I'm going to say, how's it going? That's my, uh, that's my soundbite. How's it going? Okay, so that should cover us, uh, I think. Um, so now all I need to do is do effective alarm hour here and effective alarm minute here. So now if we have traffic, it's gonna adjust uh, based on that. And then if we don't have any traffic, we should get, uh, we sh it should just work as normal. So let's uh, let's upload that and see how it looks. Hopefully it won't fail. Um, 15 percentage 12 equals 3 a.m. <laughs> yeah, I really hope it'd be nice if it was so delayed that uh, I just wouldn't go into work. Um, yeah, I'll probably get the alarm to start sending messages at some stage, like you know if it um if it did something like this adjusted based on travel time it'd send you a message to say hey i adjusted the alarm because travel time was 10 minutes slower than usual or whatever like another more realistic one that i i would probably use i probably won't use the google maps one is um checking the temperature outside so either using a thermometer myself or using a weather service because if you know if it's below like four or something like the car my window of my car is probably frozen and I need to get up earlier to uh, uh, I need to get up earlier to um, like scrape it um, so yeah hello again it's me the guy with the Irish accent who can't pronounce trees um, okay let's see so we have Okay, so the traffic is okay. We're it's working for us this time. Um, yeah, I'm just repeating it. So yeah, we should have a difference of fourteen minutes. See, there is a poss. Yeah, so <laughs> there's a possibility that it'll miss an alarm now. Um, like if it checks hey am I meant to run and the offset you know the effective alarm is, is 9 o'clock in the morning and then it checks again and the traffic and it makes the effective alarm uh, like at 8.30 um, but if it's 8.45 like it, it won't hit that alarm so we need to fix that but let's let's see it working first so the traffic offsets 12 at the minute and it's 23.05 so if we set the alarm, ooh, 
Definitely don't show that one though. Uh, so if we set the alarm for 23, 20, 20, no, 23, uh, 17. Let's make it 18 because I've been really slow doing it. Um, so I'm hoping that the effect, I should have printed out the effective alarm because I don't know for sure now. Um, but I'm hoping that the effective alarm, am I doing this right? So I'm 12, so effective alarm minutes, yeah, so it should get taken away and um, it didn't go off. see the traffic offsets currently 10 it's getting faster so what did I set it to 17 um, yeah I think I'll have to do something like that um, but but then you need to mark yeah you, you'd need to mark the alarm handled and I think you'd probably do that by saying like yeah, I, I'm not sure exactly how you would say, hey, like, isn't I'm, I, uh, you know, I want to reset the alarm so that it's, it's good to go again. I'll take a look at that now in a second. So the traffic offsets currently 10. We need lower streaming delays. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I need to look into that. It could be because I use that service for, uh, like, Restream I.O., um, that could be the issue um, with the delay. So it's 10 minutes. What did I set the alarm to? 18. Oh, I can just set it to 17. It should just beep. So it, uh, the general idea uh, works anyways. Um, yeah, I might, uh, I might take a look into that dark sea net. Um, there's a few that have been done on the ESP8266 a load of times, so I'll probably just use whatever is common. Is it Wonder Ground or something? That's a pretty common one. Um, okay, so I can check if... Yeah, if, if I... If I... Someone suggested if I change the alarm to be like minutes from midnight. Um, that's probably a good thing to do here um because i need to uh let's get rid of the board um i need to um like if i'm doing a mine or less than sign or whatever like i'd have to yeah it'd be messy so if i just convert like hours uh to minutes and just add them on to each other then that would make it a bit easier to do I would say uh, it would actually make this a whole lot easier to do too um, yeah okay cool so let's do that so let's do effective uh, effective alarm minutes from midnight that's a nice long variable name um, so we'll do alarm hour by 60 um, plus alarm minute All right so that gets us uh, that gets us the amount of time um, in minutes from uh, from midnight that our alarm is so if it was at nine o'clock in the morning it would be nine by six which is 54 so yeah this would be 540 minutes if it was um if the alarm was for nine o'clock in the morning um right so if that gives me 540 um 
how we need to adjust it. I'm just going to turn down the sound because my headphones are on my desk there and I can hear bits and pieces of me talking. Uh, thanks for joining Crocoduck. Um, yeah, I've went on a bit longer than I thought I would, but uh, I guess I have it working, but I need to fix it. <laughs> um, good night. Um, okay. Uh, okay, so traffic offset, so that's fine. Um, so this makes this part easier now as well. So I should have listened to whoever said that, so thanks for the suggestion. Um, yeah, let's do that too. Uh, um, it, it does try to keep time itself, PsyQ, um, but it wouldn't be accurate enough. Um, so like that that would be another feature to add a real time clock to it as well. So I probably will. Um, there is no difference between the two, but it, like I guess that is much easier to read. Um, I would say. Um, all right. So now, if effective, um, no, I think it's a pretty good suggestion. Why not? Um, effective. So if that is less than zero, I need to find out how many minutes are in a day. So 24 by 60, 1440. So I guess this, uh, these rules would apply again, right? Um, so if it's greater than 1439, one, I'll divide by one four four zero or modulus one four four zero um and then if it's less than zero it's that's so long okay so that should fix our effective alarm uh, yeah, send me a message if there's no Wi-Fi. You could do that, um, but I wouldn't appreciate being woken up in the middle of the night <laughs> because my Wi-Fi went. Um, but uh, yeah, I know I, I I will add a real time module at some stage. I like, I think it'll drift, but it probably wouldn't drift a huge amount. Um, yeah, like, I, I, it'd probably be okay. Um, like, it wouldn't be good for, like, a, uh, you know, I need to run this at this exact millisecond kind of a thing, but it, it'd probably just drift by a... I don't know exactly how long, but it'd probably... You know, I don't think it'd be, like, hours wrong by any stretch of the imagination. It'd probably be, like, five minutes or something. Um... Okay, uh, so that's all good. I now need to convert. I need to do the same thing for uh, alarm. Alarm minutes from midnight, which is hour by 60 minutes. All right, so sh that should get us, that should get us, um, oops. Yeah, I, I think if you if you lit up a, an LED or something to say I don't have Wi-Fi anymore, and then like you know if I saw that the night before, well I'd know that my internet was down anyways. Um, Shine Vision, it's it's actually pretty easy. Um, I'll explain that. Uh, uh, this would be the easiest way of doing it. So um, like the answer for A is equal to um. A is equal to, um, t uh, f oh, uh, three percentage two. 
so in this um, in this scenario, so it's it's the remainder of three divided by two. So um, three divided by two is is one with a remainder of one. So it's the remainder portion of this. So if you made this 11, the answer would still be one. Uh, now if you made this uh, 10 here and you made this four, the answer would be two because four by two gives you eight and then there would be a remainder of two. So that's how it works. Um, and it's called the modulus symbol. Um, all right, so that gives alarm minutes from midnight and effective minutes. Oops. Uh, so that would make it work exactly as it did before, hopefully. Um, but we need to fix that issue that we were talking about. So if if the alarm is less than What do we do here? If the alarm is less than effective alarm minutes from midnight. Um, no problem. If alarm minutes from midnight is equal or equal to effective alarm minutes from midnight. But if the effective, well, it's, that's not alarm minutes from midnight. This is the current time. So let's fix that and then it's time from midnight. Um, that's minutes from midnight. This would be a better name for it. Minutes from midnight. Bleh. It's not from, it's since. Minutes since midnight. Uh, okay, so let's see. <laughs> yeah, um I'm just trying to think what fixes this. So if minutes since midnight is greater than effective alarm, you want the alarm to have gone off. But if it's how like how does it know that the alarm has gone off for that morning already? And when do you say, okay, that's fine, you don't need to worry about that anymore? Um, effective alarm minutes. I guess you just do this alarm handled code and then you set alarm handled equals faults at some stage like maybe an hour after an hour after the alarm should have went off you could reset it at midnight every day I don't know I don't know how to handle this though um, I'm not sure if I'm explaining the issue properly yeah I think that makes sense doesn't it that yeah I think that's a good suggestion Torsten um, that works for me anyways because like it's it's never gonna be that <laughs> um, so if minutes since midnight uh, uh, 
minus effective minutes since mid range is um hmm. let's do something else here um because it's massive it's gonna just be a huge line of code so let's do else make it a little bit easier to manage so um minutes since midnight minus effective alarm midnight I so if it was if the current time was sorry if the alarm was at nine I'd want the alarm to get reset at 2100 hours so if I add the two of them together If alarm is else, if alarm handled, uh, if minutes since midnight is that, if minutes midnight that divided by, no, it's not divided by, we can use. Yeah, we can use divided by actually. Um, no, minus minutes since midnight. So if it was at nine, the alarm was at nine and the time is, so it should be minus. Should it be? I'm tired. Um, if the alarm was at nine, I want to reset the alarm at twenty one hundred. So, if I just add twelve to it, alarm minutes so minutes since midnight plus effective alarm minutes from midnight now I want the difference of them to be I want the difference of them to be half of 1440. Seven twenty. Um, so what I'm trying to do now is to, yeah, unset the alarm. So basically, like, if the alarm is dynamic, what we were doing before, uh, what we were doing before it was a static alarm so like once it wasn't the time that the alarm is now we were rearming the alarm so basically saying like it is possible for the buzzer to go off again um like when you press the button it says buzzer i don't want you to go off 
but then when it's not the time for the alarm to go anymore it re-enables the buzzer until the button is pressed again and uh, yes so but with the alarm being dynamic you can't just say if it's not the time that the alarm is um, anymore it would be easier to stick the count from minutes from zero zero then high noon would be 720 for the reset alarm to be active um, Add 12 if past 24, subtract 24. I I think this will work. So minutes from midnight. So if it was zero and the added, or sorry, if the alarm was meant to go off at zero and minutes since midnight was now 12, which would make it 12 in the day, that would make it greater than 720 if the alarm was meant to go off at 9 and it was now 2100 hours that would also be 12 yeah i think this will work okay the effective minutes since midnight and how about the scenario if it was 23 Yeah, if it's minus, if it was five o'clock in the morning, it was 23, it'd be five minus 23, then I just have to add 12, if it's less than. Yes, speaking of sleep. I guess I could just give myself a static alarm. Yeah, let's just do that. Int reset alarm time minutes from midnight. Uh, and that is equal to pretty much that uh, alarm hour plus 60 well I guess I don't need to do it like that I could pen and paper might be a good idea I'm just gonna get something out the door and finish up I think um, right, so that gives me my effective alarm time minute, and I want to add, uh, oops, uh, oh, that's hurt. I want to add 720 to this. And then I need to do my modulus. this here because it's definitely going to be greater than because I'm, I'm not minusing anything so does that work so if it's 720 uh, that work before the alarm was dynamic dev now it doesn't work <laughs> because the alarm could change in between each minute um, and also I don't want the alarm to go off twice like is in if the traffic was bad you press the buzzer and then traffic's not so bad later so it goes off a second time um, does that work? So I have 720, that has brought me over the time limit, 
that's what you were saying electronic smoke I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty much adding 12 and then if I subtract the 24 oh. <laughs> this is so easy but I'm just not uh, it's not feeling it um, so I better get rid of that. Plus seven twenty. No, if I just leave it at seven twenty and then minus Yeah, I probably I have access to the day I have access to what day it is by the alarm oh, this might be something I need to revisit um I could just add 720 to it oh I don't know yeah I think for the moment, because I'm getting pretty bogged down on it, I think PsyQ, your suggestion is pretty good. So if if minutes since midnight is zero, let's just set the alarm handled to be false. Um, yeah. <laughs> See, that works for me for the minute because I'm not going to set any alarms for midnight. Um, so now we just need to fix this issue. So if minutes since midnight is greater than or equal to the effective alarm, I think it's time to just go off. So let's try that. Good suggestion, PsyQ so has, you know, has bogged down in logic there. I think. I think Dave's suggestion is probably right. Like, I have access to what date it is. So I should, like, mark, hey, the alarm has gone off for this date. And then when the date changes, um, then I can reset it. Um, but I like your suggestion, which is if minutes since midnight is zero, then reset the alarm. So th at midnight, it's going to change does that seem right that it went off there the alarm is active minutes since midnight is greater than effective alarm the alarm is handled N no this is Oh, do I have that somewhere? Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, that's a good suggestion. Um, well, you can just set the alarm to not be on. Uh, actually, um, pretty interestingly, uh, my alarm was going off when I was in the other room and I was able to reset the alarm from my phone to a different time and it stopped going off. So that was pretty nice. This isn't this isn't going to work the way we have it at the moment. Right. Cause so if minutes since midnight is greater than the effective alarm, like it's going to be greater than the effective alarm. for a huge amount of the day. If 
minutes since midnight is greater than or equal to effective alarm. If it's smaller than the alarm and it goes off, set a flag. Yeah. The time on the alarm if flag is set. See ya, Leonid. Uh, thanks for joining. Um, so if you can understand what I'm talking about here, that like if the alarm is nine o'clock in the morning, does the reset the alarm at midnight fix that? I guess it kind of does check the time of the alarm if the flag is set and if not if it's smaller than the alarm it goes and it goes off set a flag if set delete um if smaller than the alarm and it goes off set a flag so if minutes since midnight smaller than the alarm, set a flag. Yeah, if it's less than the alarm, set a flag. And it's just that the alarm might change. Effective alarm since midnight. So if that was at eight o'clock. I think this works in pretty much all scenarios other than on startup now. So like when I restart this, it's gonna be bigger than the effective alarm. So it's just gonna beep. Um. Yeah. Um, okay, so Yeah, okay, so actual um, and it's from midnight. Should probably swap them around actually. Oops. Alright, so that gives me my actual alarm time minutes from midnight. Then this thing, actual. No. Um, so if, if alarm is active, well, say we only wanted to get it to wake me up early you could do if minutes since midnight is less than or equal to actual alarm from midnight and does that work no because it could be bigger i don't know I am also really tired. Oh, I can't believe how stuck I am with this. <laughs> drill them anyways, just put the silencer on the drill and away you go.
Hmm. Comparing against the moving target is my problem. might actually make sense. Okay, I don't know where I'm going with this, but let's, uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah, actually Dave did that in his last stream, <laughs> he drilled by a hand. You were only uh, clearing out a hole of a jig, though. Um, okay, so... Uh, the alarm gets adjusted. So to, let's start with just an example. So if it's 9 o'clock in the morning, 9 zero, zero, I hold my pen weird. This I'm aware of. Um, and the alarm gets adjusted to 8.45. You want to sound the alarm when the time is greater than 8.45. But you don't really, like if, that's fine, but then if I restart my board now, like at 23, don't set alarm handle to false before the alarm time is over. Alarm handled. Yeah, so if minutes to midnight is zero. Yeah, so I guess I can just do that, right? If instead of using midnight, if minutes since midnight is greater than actual alarm time. I still have the same issue. Minutes since midnight is greater than or equal to effective alarm from midnight. That's fine, but it's too loose um yeah so the issue with what i currently have at the moment is so say my alarm is for nine o'clock and even forget about it being adjusted for anything what we have at the minute is like check is minutes since midnight greater than alarm and if I reset the board right now at uh, 11.45 it is greater than alarm but Yeah, you see, this wasn't a problem before when it was just like, is it equal to this? But now that it's adjusting, it's uh... 
maybe I'm just doing it wrong. Like, so the problem is that I don't want to get caught in a trap where I'm, uh, like, the first reply from Google Maps was, like, it's a 15-minute offset, so we changed to 8.45, and the current time is 8.44, but then the next reply from Google Maps says that there's a 20-minute offset, and now the effective alarm is 8.40, but we're already past that, that, um, Like, I could check, if I stored the last effective time, I could check is the time in between those two. Yeah, that, that actually works. Let's do that. Um, and I'll try to explain what I mean as I'm doing it. So if I store the last effective time, last effective alarm, um, is that equal to zero to begin with? Um, down here we'll do last effective alarm is equal to effective alarm um, If alarm is hot and need alarm is less than or equal to current time, then sound alarm. Yeah, but when you restart the board, the alarm is needed uh, by default, right? And you can't just set it to be needed at midnight because what if I restart the board at one o'clock in the morning? Then it won't work till the following midnight. Um, Last effective alarm. I think this is going to work okay. That, um, yeah, so I have what do I want to do here if, um, So if alarm is active, let's just go in here if alarm is active and we'll do other stuff. Um, if minutes since midnight is um, I thought I had what I wanted to do here, but I don't know if I do. Let's just try. If minutes since midnight is greater than or equal to effective alarm time for midnight. And if minutes since midnight is less than or equal to last effective alarm. Does this work? So that's basically saying if I'm higher than, greater than current alarm. No, it's no good.
How don't I just do this? So if it's greater than that, but it's less than that plus, I don't know, 30. That solves the midnight thing. What's the format? I'm just control shift T. Doesn't seem to be format or do we know? Just control T. Um, You set your alarm at one in the morning and you want to make sure your alarm goes off an hour before you turn it on. You know, you awake anyways. Is that for power outages? Um, sure. It's gonna fail to upload. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna finish up. Uh, like, I'll look back over the chat as well at your suggestions. Like, I'm sure what you're saying makes sense, but I'm just not <laughs> processing it at the moment now. Um, yeah, so what I'm doing here now is that uh, if the minute since midnight is greater than or equal to the effective alarm to go off, but only if it's less than or equal to the actual alarm plus 30. Um, you want to make the alarm go off an hour before you turn it on. Well, like activating the alarm at at midnight only means that if you were setting the alarm at one o'clock in the morning for eight o'clock in the morning, it wouldn't go off. Uh, right, so that's doing something. The traffic offsets only two at the moment. Um, So I can set it to 56, that should go off. So I'll set it to 57. Oops. I'll even be in my bed too. Um, all right, so that's working for me now. That like it's twelve fifty eight. The alarm set for I reset it. Yeah, I think that'll do for the moment. Um, so when this changes to twenty three fifty, oh, you aren't seeing my screen. Now you could see that. Oops. 
and this changes to 56 it'll beep if the offset's still who would have thought that this was complicated it probably isn't I'm just doing it complicated yeah Yeah, <laughs> I'm uh, I'm so tired to, instead of turning off the alarm, I turned off the stream. Um, sorry about that. Um, okay, uh, I am going to finish up there. Um, I'll upload the code once I ignore the, um, once I do a git ignore on the secret file. But um, yeah, uh, thanks everyone for joining. Sorry that it's gotten a bit messy towards the end here, but um, yeah. Thanks a lot.